Hi everyone, I'm back. This is Brian Neal with TradeBeefree.com. I'm going to go over some of the trades that we looked at this morning, we talked about this morning, and and how those turned out. And the first thing I want to show you before I get into MPW is, uh, let's see, Kohu. Kohu was one of the most interesting ones this morning. And as we can see here, the stock never really hit the entry point. The Before I jump in the trade, I want to see it for this pattern on a daily chart. I want to see it jump... Um, or move above the high here. And so we wanted to see it you know, go above, I think, 1972. I think there was a resistance level at 1972 along with this high here at 1967. So we wanted to see it you know, go up to 1975, really, before entering a trade. Never happened. And if it doesn't happen in the morning before 11 a.m., I really don't want to enter that trade. I mean, they often still work, but you get the bigger moves um, in the morning. So it hits the entry point in the morning, it'll tend to move more strongly. And that's when I like to get those on those bottoming trades that I explain more on the uh, site. Um, the other stock, though, I did take, trade I did take was MPW, and that worked out real nice. This is a very strong daily chart. It did. It hit 1305, like we talked about this morning. And so I jumped in, and it made a nice uh, little move here to 1318. Initially, about 1% only, but like I said, it has a nice window up to uh, 1360. Now, usually with this trading setup, I like to trade them above $20. So if it comes up on a stock above 20, I'll go ahead and jump in. But these less than 20, I tend not to. Um, I just got to alert that applied optics went above 90. So I'll probably keep that for a few days. I'll probably stop it at the entry point. Uh, so if it goes the other way, I'll just get out of it because, again, under $20, I'm not as thrilled by that trading setup, by that technical trading setup. And now I want to take a look at Netflix here. Um, Netflix broke the pre-market highs, but it didn't do that until, let's see, this is after, yeah, 10.55, 11 o'clock. So this kind of reminds me of NVIDIA last quarter where it, it waited um, till later in the morning to finally break out above the pre-market highs, which tends to act as resistance. So if you see that break, it's a good sign on a catalyst like this with a, a large gap higher. The problem with Netflix for me, though, is that it didn't gap enough, has a heavy float, and it didn't beat on the bottom line. It beat on subscriber growth. And, you know, at some point, this company is going to have to make money uh, to pay, be able to pay all that debt back and uh, with all the competition in the space, yeah, the subscribers grew maybe, but I don't know. I just have a problem with, with uh, trading stocks that are um, so richly valued and have such a high debt load like this, like Netflix, especially when you have competition that can easily you know, overcome them with the next greatest series that comes out because what's, you know, what's popular right now won't be popular in a, in a year or two, three years, so... Um, but anyway, it still broke the pre-market highs um, because it has a higher float. Like I said this morning, because it has a higher float and because it's not a real strong setup the way it's looking versus the other stocks that I tend to trade in this pattern. Um, it didn't make the big move initially. You know, Usually when I trade this pattern, the stock will move up 3 to 5% easily within the first hour uh, in most cases. So it has a very high likelihood of success. But when you get it, up to the higher float uh, stocks, you know, with, I think this has, I think Netflix has a few hundred million shares, um, or 100 million shares, 150 million shares, something like, something like that. It was, it's got a lot of shares uh, trading, so I knew it would be a slow mover, and yeah, that's what it's doing, it's taking its time, took it an hour, I think, to move one and a half percent, you know, and, and with this higher price name, and it's a top growth stock, and it's had a really strong long-term uptrend thus far. Um, you could justify taking the trade above the pre-market highs. I just, again, don't get that excited about uh, this company. But what I did get excited about was Applied Optics last week. That was our number one uh, stock in our newsletter, uh, the weekly alert, last Monday. And so far, it's gone up like, I think, 30% now. 30% within a week. I was talking the other day about how it's finding support at the upper. Today, the, the market was a little weak at the open. Went a little bit below the Bollinger Band and then sprung back above it. And the entry point on this would have been 
you know, probably a move above 86 or the high made on Friday. And from there, it made a real nice move, $4 move, which I didn't expect. I mean, I've got a big position that I'm writing higher in the investbefree.com strategy. And I think it's up another few thousand dollars. I've also got a swing trade that's up really nicely as well. And yeah, it just keeps going higher. So I think the ABC move higher target is around 92, though, 92, 93. So we may see a pullback, you know, a fairly sharp pullback at that point. We may be coming back to the 20 EMA, uh, you know, maybe $80. So we'll come back to 75 to $80, I would think, before uh, finding some support again. And then I would think it would go another leg higher into its earnings release here in a couple weeks or so given that they tend to beat uh, earnings and the semiconductor reports have been really strong so far. So, you know, we're looking for that to to uh, continue after a pullback. Yeah, just getting back to the MPW trade, this is a really nice day trade or short-term swing trade. It has a very high probability of success. And what you do is you just, you know, wait for that entry point, you go in and you can just sit back and watch that go higher in most cases. And, you know, usually it'll make a, at least a 4% move higher within the next few days. And it's a very easy swing trading strategy or day trading strategy even. Um, you know, getting in at this entry point here, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, if the stock is in the higher price range or has a, a stronger rounding bottom pattern, let's say, and it breaks out of this candlestick pattern, it often goes up four or five, 6% or more, you know, th that first day. Uh, it looks like Amazon just went above 1,020. looks like it's breaking out now too. So uh, we had that featured last night in the newsletter. So, okay, well that about wraps it up. Um, like I said, this explosive bottoming pattern ex is explained more on our site. It's very simple trading strategy to execute and you don't have to, you know, sell at the ask or, you know, worry about your share size or, um, you know, worry that you're going to be capped out at a couple hundred thousand dollars a year or three hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, this strategy scales well to large account sizes. So if you learn this, and master this, it's very, very good. It has about a, in our back testing, 75 to 80% success rate. It's probably my favorite day trading setup besides the earnings eruptions trade, which is also on the site. But uh, you can scale this to large account sizes and you just enter at the entry point and you sit back, grab your favorite beverage and watch it go higher in most cases. Um, goes up a certain amount, you just stop it at your entry point. In this case, I'll do that because again, that uh, the whole healthcare situation may affect the stock and I think there's some uh, uh, confusion right now as to what's going to happen next but you know if this starts going the other way I'd, I'd get out of it at the entry point but uh, you know in general this is a very good setup and if it's above $20 you know I'll just, I'll just jump in and write it higher and like I said it's very it's a very high likelihood of success a lot of people want to play you know, candlestick patterns off of the lows, you know, they'll wait for a stock to get oversold or get so far away from the 50-day moving average, and they'll look for a candlestick pattern. And I'm here to tell you that that's not nearly as successful, in my experience, as this strategy, because usually with that strategy, too, you have a, a wider stop, so they'll put the stop below the prior low. With this strategy, I'm getting a 75-80% success rate with a 3.5% stop. So on a swing trade like that, it's a very high success rate. Recently, it's been higher than that. Um, but if you just play a candlestick pattern off, off a low like that, like a lot, a lot of other strategies out there will tell you to do, you know, wait till it stretches below the 50-day moving average and a, some kind of bullish um, sign, then, you know, you're going to have to take your stop loss below the prior low, and that's often 5%, 10%, 15% below your entry point. Okay, so with this... It has a very high likelihood of success with a tight 3.5% stop loss. Now, it won't be quite as high with MPW because it's below $20. So these, these stocks under $20 just aren't quite as reliable, you know, so it might be, you know, 65%. Um, and again, with the healthcare situation, it may, it may pull back, but I'll, I'll stop this at the entry point probably. Um, you know, if it got off to a really strong start, then I would give it more room, but um, it's got it off to an okay start, and you know we'll see how it plays out. But Kohu is starting to rebound now. But again, you know if, if it doesn't hit the entry point before 11 a.m., 
you know, I'm not really that interested in the, in the trade in most cases. Okay, so, and AOI is going above 90 right now. I wouldn't take that trading setup either at this time of day, um, just because it's less reliable after you know 11 a.m. You know, maybe later on in the afternoon toward the close, it have a higher likelihood of success if it breaks out above 90 or above a tight consolidation. But I probably won't be that interested in that right now either, and just hold the uh, the large position, the large position I have right now on it, and just let it go higher, um, and probably stop it. You know, on the swing trade, probably stop it. You know, if it goes below the 20 EMA at this point, close below that, and then goes below that low the next day, or if it goes below the 20 EMA or touches it, just sell into the next rally and wait for another setup. So, okay, that's about it, guys. Uh, have a great day, and we'll talk to you real soon.